everybody, welcome to another video. As you can see from the title, you already know that this is going to be a book haul. But before we get into the book haul, I just have someone that I need to introduce you to. <sighs> Introducing Luna. Yes, Luna Lovegood, like from Harry Potter. I tricked my family into this name because I made it sound like the best idea ever without telling them where I got it. And now my dog has a fangirl name as you would expect. She's very sleepy, I've got her in a very good mood to just sit and um, look very cute for the camera. I cannot believe how chill she is and she just likes to sit around, she just sleeps and lounges around. Occasionally we give her treats, she is so sleepy right now. <laughs> she only is falling asleep in my arms and she's kind of ready, she's ready for her next nap. And guys, if you've never had a puppy, this is an actual baby that you have to put down for naps. And she's just the cutest thing. I just... Please don't eat my eyelashes. You can expect her to pop up in various videos because I am on babysitting duty, so whenever I'm filming, she's going to be around. You're going to help me pick out books, so you're just going to lick my face. Okay. Look at this, she's asleep. She's literally, she's asleep now. So, um, the puppy's falling asleep, so I'm gonna move her. And I'm gonna show you some books, because, you know, that's why we're here. Are you gonna sit here? Are you gonna be... Okay, she's gonna be eating me now. She's gonna eat me. Yep, are you gonna be biting me? I think she wants to be left alone, to be honest, you know? She just wants to chill and sleep in her bed, not be on camera. Please don't die. Please don't jump off me. Well, I'm going to be showing you some books that I have received in the mail, some I did purchase myself. The first book that I have to show you is The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green. I am so obsessed with this book because, I mean, it's so aesthetically pleasing. So this is as high fantasy as you can get. There are multiple perspectives in this book. One of our protagonists actually is a smoke thief and what they do is steal and collect demon smoke and they sell it on the black market. Doesn't that sound as though that job description was made for me? And Sally Green is one of the sassiest writers I know when it comes to writing dialogue. So this book has so much dry humour in it. Highly recommended. Next up is I Have Lost My Way by Gail Foreman. One of my journey with a contemporary book, you ask? I loved Gail's If I Stay duology, at least the second book. I previously hauled this in my last book haul, but it was the art version, and now I have the real one. The three characters in this book who all meet at a point when they're all sort of at their lowest points in life. So we have a character who's completely lost her voice at, while recording her album. Then we have someone who's lost the love of his life. And then finally we have someone who's lost absolutely everything. And they come together to overcome those troubles. And it's a very much coming of age story about finding yourself. And sometimes we need those stories to sort of get back to track and feel some feels. Now one of my besties will be so proud of me. I have After the Fire by Will Hill in my possession finally. So Zoe from No Safer Place has been telling me to read this book for months and months. This is her favourite book on it. But just to go on record here, if I read this, you have to read Gilded Cage Zoe, otherwise, um, you know, we can't be friends. But this book is all about a cult and Moonbeam starts to notice how not everything is as it should be. And our antagonist here, Father John, is a very strict leader of the cult. And we sort of go on a journey of her trying to bring forward the lies that she's been brought up amongst. And I'm very excited to read this because it sounds very dark and very enlightening. This next book has been on my radar for so long and it doesn't publish till August, but <sighs> thank you, Walker, who are just, you know, make my dreams come true. I've said this before. I have Only Love Can Break Your Heart by Katie Webber, who wrote Ring Jones. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you would have seen my review where I did the full-on ombre makeup side cover because for my reviews, I like to, you know, do the makeup look of the book that I'm talking about. And this is her new book, and it's all about a road trip, which I am absolutely obsessed with, whether it's contemporary fantasy or sci-fi. I love when characters are traveling somewhere. I don't know why that is a thing I love. So this book has a lot of heartbreak in it and a sprinkling of feels. And Katie is such a talented author that her writing just flows really well. Then I have The Treatment by C.L. Taylor. 
I have been after this book since listening to Callie. Her talking about this book made me want it so much because it's about a facility that needs to be infiltrated into and it's sort of a thriller and she's very good at psychological thrillers. That's her specialty in her adult books so I'm excited to see how that translates to her YA book. And I need some thrills in my life because after One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus, I've been after a good YA thriller and I feel like this is a good contender for that. Then I have To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. This book is about sirens and princes and sort of gives me dark Little Mermaid vibes. And Little Mermaid is my absolutely favourite Disney movie ever. But I also like very questionable and dark films and books so this is sort of a very good mix of that. So our main character has to deliver the heart of a siren killer or she'll remain human forever and that sounds like very high stakes. So I'm curious whether this book is actually fast paced. The next books shouldn't even be described as books because they are a work of art. Look at these covers, just can you appreciate these drawings? So we have books one, two and three and they are all about magic. So this is a Shadow Black Spellbinder and Charm Cluster by Sebastian de Castell, who is a terrific human, can I just say? I went to a, a Culky Books event with Holly Black, Sebastian and Alexandra Christo, author of the previous book, and we had a sort of lunch slash dinner with them. And not to brag, but I made him put Gilded Cage by Vic James on his TBR. And he was just great to chat to because we talked about magic and how I'm obsessed with fantasy a little bit too much. Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Clairhoff is my next book. And let me tell you, this is such a high contender for challenging one of us's lives. And this is described as Gossip Girl meets Cruel Intentions, so I'm bowing down to that premise. This book I actually got in January, and I put it with my red books instead of my normal TBR pile because I didn't want them to get ruined at the time. Moving house is just stress central, let me tell you. And so I thought I'd show in this book. So it's the Order of Darkness series by Philippa Gregory. Now Philippa Gregory is sort of a renowned historical writer. I've never read any of her books. So she wrote things like The White Queen and uh, some Anne Boleyn novels. And this is her first YA book series. So when Simon & Schuster decided to send these my way, I fell over metaphorically. I'm just so intrigued by the story. It's about this monk who's sent to investigate this girl who is accused of witchcraft. And this sounds absolutely incredible because, again, we follow that trend that Liv loves of travelling. And we get this sort of ensemble cast of characters. Alchemy, witches, werewolf, death dancers, whatever that is, but I'm there for it. So this is a bind up of the first three books and then this is the final book in the series. Then I have The City of Lost Fortunes by Brian Camp. This book is set in New Orleans, which after watching the originals, that setting is just so perfect and so underrated. We follow this character who is a magician. He has the ability to find lost things. When the fortune god of New Orleans is murdered, he has to uncover the plot of what actually went down. Pretty much a murder mystery within a fantasy novel. So can just, hallelujah. Then I have Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I was so lucky to be part of the blog tour for this. And actually reveal an extract so you can read that on my blog if you would like. I'll put a link down below. So this book follows Justice who begins to read the teachings of Martin Luther King. He's falsely arrested and that sets him on a path to write letters to Martin Luther King. And this is such an emotive read. As this book perfectly brings to light all the bloody issues in society right now, which I'm not going to get into because I don't want to do a rant in a book haul video. You just learn so much about racial profiling and how just effed up the world is. And this is just a very important book to educate absolutely everyone. Look, and it's not even that long, so you don't have an excuse to not read it, okay? So just go forth. Ink by Alice Broadway has been on my radar for many years now, just mainly all of my friends telling me to read it, and I've heard Alice speak at so many events, and she is just an angel. In this world, every action and your every deed is tattooed on your body, and when you die, you get produced this 
skin book, which is sort of a history of your life. And our main character begins to discover that her father has hidden some secrets after looking through his skin book. I'm very intrigued by this. Because just imagine, nothing remaining a secret, just everything that you do is there for the world to see. War Store by Victoria Aveyard is the final book in the Red Queen series and I was so lucky to go to her London event where Waterstones had these gorgeous blue sprayed edge editions. So of course I got to meet her. So she signed my book. You guys get this, she told me that my hair looks like mare and <laughs> That rhymes and that sounded weird, but you know, just being compared to a fantasy character is just very up my street. And Victoria's one of my favourite people ever. This series is about a world where there's two types of blood, and if you have silver blood, you're seen as a superior race, and if you have red blood, then, you know, have fun with your life. That's just code for you won't have fun with your life. And the main character happens to have red blood, but she still manages to have the magical abilities that the silver bloods do. The queen takes her in to pretend to be a silver, because otherwise people will start questioning why do you have red blood and still manage to have powers? What's going on? And it has some really great characters. And a character drawn book is my favourite thing on earth, you know? just. Gilded Cage. I wonder how many times I can say Gilded Cage in this video without coming across as a bit unhinged. But then I have Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. The premise of this is such a unique fantasy that I'm very intrigued to what it's actually going to turn out to be when I read it. And we follow this girl who comes from a long line of money lenders who are really reluctant to actually collect what they're owed, which leads to them living in poverty. But when a secret gets out, that our main character here is able to turn silver into gold. That catches the attention of some very undesirable beings. So this is a little bit of a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin and I am so excited. I'm not a big fan of this whole retelling trend that's going on, but I mean, just this one sounds so epic and perfect. Then I have The Odorless Travelled by Stephen Fry and this is a non-fiction book all about poetry and the English language. Stephen Fry is one of my favourite humans on the planet, therefore you can never have enough Stephen Fry books in your life. Now I have the prequel to the Summoner series by Tara Mathru and this is the art copy. This book follows a young Arcturus who is one of Fletcher's mentors in our original trilogy and I'm just very intrigued. Because Taryn's fantasy books are so well crafted, yet they don't go overboard because sometimes fantasy books I get so stressed out reading because there's so much weird jargon that I don't understand and there's too much world building that you just get lost trying to figure out all the rules in the world. But here you kind of dive straight into the action and it's very easy to understand. But this series has so many Pokemon vibes because the way you summon demons, you have summoner abilities and you summon them and you can fight with them and each have different levels and strengths and just so much fun. Then I have Sweet Black Ways by Christina Perez. This book sounds like an ideal read for me because I love a bit of romance in fantasy and to have forbidden romance even better because who doesn't love angst? I mean, the cruel prince, hello. And this is based on legends and the story of Tristan and Isolde. And particularly we follow Branwen in this story. There's magic, there's secrets, and a bit of undesired romance. Then I have This Mortal Coil by Emily Savada. And this story is just sci-fi at its finest. We have chemists and genetics being involved and this deadly virus that is threatening to end the human race and the main character finds out that her father was discovering a cure so she kind of takes over from him and then my final book is Legendary Ladies by Anne Shen. I'm such a huge mythology fan so having a book all about individual goddesses that absolutely just kicked off. So this book is a bit of a fact file on various goddesses. The drawings are stunning and I was actually part of the blog tour. So I'm going to show you my goddess. So we got to choose which goddess we wanted to feature in our review and I got this one. She was the best choice I could have made. So Hecate actually is the goddess 
of magic and she has the key to the underworld. If that doesn't sound exactly like me, I don't know what does. So I would highly recommend this book if you love mythology. Each goddess has her own profile and it tells you what she's the goddess of and what her powers are and what they specialize in. So these are all the books that I got in April. A few are from May and of course there's the big lie of the Philippa Gregory book which was from January. If you got some great recommendations make sure to comment what book you would want to read the most out of all of these or if you have read any of them and then tell me your opinions so we can discuss it. So as usual there will be links to all of the books in the description so you can check out the ones you're interested in. So don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye!